Hello all, welcome to EC Electronics. So in this video, we are going to see about thermocouples. We will be discussing about the basics, the structure and also the various effects which is constituting the working of thermocouple. Okay, so we will be seeing the basic structure and the working and also we will be seeing 10 important questions that can come from the thermocouple area. So uh, whenever you are studying a topic, always try to study the questions connected with it. That will be the uh, most effective way of studying a topic. Okay. So in this video, we'll be seeing the structure, the working and also most important questions. So let's see about thermocouples. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about the thermocouples. In the previous video on EMI, we have discussed about thermistors. Here we are going to discuss about thermocouples. Okay. So the thermocouples are used for measuring of temperature variations. They are active transducers and they are used for measuring of temperature variations. Okay, so what is the purpose of a transducer or what is the function of a transducer is it takes a non-electrical quantity and converts that to an electrical quantity, right? So here the conversion is from temperature to voltage. That is it converts the non-electrical quantity temperature and it gives the reading in the form of voltage, which is an electrical quantity. Okay, so that is a transducer. Now this thermocouple is an active transducer. Why? Because we have discussed about thermistors and arteries which are actually passive transducers means they require some form of power source uh, for them to work but here they doesn't require any power source or any uh, form of power for it to work it is a self-generating one that is it doesn't require any external sources or power sources okay so it is called a active transducer okay so that is the basic introduction to thermocouple. Now let us have a look in the structure. So this is the structure of a thermocouple. It is having, you can see that there is metal 1 and metal 2. These are two dissimilar metals. Okay. And these two dissimilar metals, that is two different metals, are joined to form two junctions. This is junction 1 and this is junction 2. So this is the hot junction and this is the cold junction. This is the junction where we connect the device or uh, any source for for measuring the temperature and hence it is the measuring junction that is if you want to measure the temperature of any substance or any uh, thing just connect that to this hot junction and this junction is the reference junction which is called the cold junction okay and it is always kept at that is naturally and uh, generally it is kept at zero degrees celsius so that it is easy for uh, measurement okay so this is the re uh, reference junction this is the measuring junction and this junction is the hot one and this one is the cold junction because it is kept at a relative lower temperature or at zero degree most of the times okay so this is the structure of a thermocouple and you can see that there is a voltmeter connected to this circuit so this forms a circuit right so in this closed path there is a voltmeter connected now, the voltmeter, we know that it is used for measuring of voltage or potential difference, right? So, it is clear that there will be some potential generated in this circuit and that voltage or that potential is measured with the help of a voltmeter. Now, in order to explain the working of a thermocouple, we generally uh, make use of three effects. The first one is Seebeck effect, second one is Peltier effect. And third one is Thomson's effect. And these effects actually help us in understanding the working of thermocouple. Anyway, I just want to conclude uh, the three effects as consider that we are going to connect a temperature source here. And this uh, junction is kept at 0 degree, right? So there is a temperature difference. And due to this temperature difference, there is EMF generated at these two junctions and the net value of the emf in the circuit is measured with the help of the voltmeter okay so just know that when two dissimilar metals are connected together to form two junctions and when the two junctions are kept at two different temperatures there will be emf generated at the junctions and the net value of emf is measured with the help of the voltmeter that is the sum total of the working of a thermocouple anyway for your better understanding, we'll discuss about the three effects also. Okay. So first we are going to discuss about Seebeck effect. Then we'll be discussing 
Peltier effect and then we will be discussing the Thomson's effect. So, when discussing these effects, you will get to know the more clear picture on how this thermocouple is actually working. Okay. Also, as I told that there are two different or dissimilar metals used here, right? If the metals are uh, similar kind, it doesn't form the thermocouple. So, the metals used here is or should be dis dissimilar or different. And the general combinations we use for forming the thermocouple or for manufacturing of thermocouples are first one chromal constanin, second one chromal alumel, third one is rhodium iridium, fourth one tungsten iridium, fifth one copper constanin. These are the combinations generally we use. Okay. So just for your uh, information, I am including these contents. Okay. So this is the structure of a thermocouple. Now let us have a look into the that is have a detailed look into the effects which is explaining the thermocouple working. So the first effect which is explaining the thermocouple working is the Seebach effect. Okay. So the Seebach effect states that when two different metals are connected to form two junctions then EMF is induced at the two junctions. So the EMF is induced at the two junctions and this EMF which is induced is different for different metal combinations. Okay. So it is at junctions. So in a, a thermocouple, we are using a voltmeter and this voltmeter is measuring the net effect of this EMF which is produced at the two junctions. And hence we will be uh, getting the value of temperature in the form of voltage reading. Okay. So that is the simple working. So, Seebach effect is explaining that when two different metals are connected to form two junctions, EMF is induced at the two junctions and this is different for different metals. Next one is Peltier effect which is actually similar to that of Seebach effect. Actually, these three effects are similar but there is some small changes in the explanation. Okay. So, Second effect is Peltier effect which is stating that when two dissimilar metals form two junctions and EMF is generated in the circuit and this is due to the temperature difference at the junction. So this second effect is actually explaining the cause of the EMF generation. The first effect is just explaining that an EMF is generated but the cause or the reason is actually explained in the second effect. Okay, So that is the difference. Third one. It's a Thomson's effect and here I've put a double quotes because this part is exactly the same. See, I've not written it here, but it is starting like when two dissimilar metals form a junction and EMF is generated in the circuit due to the temperature difference in the junction. That much portion is exactly same for the third effect also. In addition to that, it is explaining that EMF exists in the circuit due to the temperature difference and it exists in the entire length of the conductor. So, an EMF is existing or EMF is generated in the circuit and it is existing in the entire length of the conductor. So, the three effects, it, its basis same, only difference is in the detailing. Okay, So, the three effects that is explaining the working of thermocouple this is a very important question which is the answer for the question is Seebach effect, Peltier effect and Thomson's effect. These three effects in combination explains how a thermocouple is working. Okay so that's all about the effects that is explaining the thermocouple working. Next we are going to see the relation between the EMF generated and the temperature. So next is the relation between the voltage and the temperature. So, how the EMF generated in the circuit is related with the temperature variation or the temperature difference we are going to see. So, before uh, explaining the relation, actually the voltage that is generated or the EMF is depending on four factors, the two metals and also the two junctions. Okay, so that thing should be kept in mind. It actually depends on the two junctions, the state of two junctions and also the two different metals we are used for forming a thermocouple. Okay, so the equation is EMF E equal to A into delta theta plus B delta theta square where delta theta is the temperature difference and A and B are the constants. Generally, in order to form a simple equation or simple relation, we ignore B because B is of small value 
the value of b is small so we ignore it and we form a relation like e equal to a delta theta and from this you will get the temperature difference will be the emf generated or the voltage by the constant a so this is the relation between the temperature difference and the emf generated and with uh, the help of a thermocouple we can actually measure up to 1400 degrees celsius up to this much temperature difference or tem temperature we can measure using a thermocouple okay so this is the voltage temperature relation next we are going to see some important questions from the thermocouple area Next, we are going to see some important questions from the thermocouple session. The first question is, you will be seeing the questions on board. The first question is, most suitable material for a thermocouple is dash. A, brass, B, gold, C, platinum, D, silver. Correct answer is C, platinum. Platinum is one of the most important or suitable materials used for forming of thermocouples. It is having very high sensitivity and constant and Constantin is a other material which can be used as a combination with it. Okay. So the correct answer is option C, which is platinum. Okay. So generally we use a lot of combinations. I have explained some combinations in the video also. Okay. So these materials can be used for measuring of temperature and can be formed uh, a thermocouple. Okay. Second question. If two different metal uh, metals are joined forming a closed circuit and electric current flows it is actually a true or false type of question a true b false correct answer is it is false why because when two different metals are joined forming a close uh, closed circuit doesn't uh, current doesn't really flow why because only if there is a temperature difference in the two junctions the electric current will start flowing okay so that is actually the working of a thermocouple and it is explained in the Thomson's effect and the Peltier effect, etc. Okay. So, only if there is a temperature difference, the current actually flows. So, the option here is B. It is false. Okay. Then, third question. Third question is, which of the following should satisfy for measuring higher temperatures using a thermocouple? A. No wire is required. B. Wire must be small. C wire must be thin, D wire must, must be heavy. Correct answer is D. High temperature can be measured using thermocouple by making the wire heavy. Okay, the wire should be heavy. Correct answer is option D is the correct answer. Now moving on to the fourth question. Okay. Fourth question. For accurate temperature measurement in a thermocouple, the dash. A. Cold compensation is needed. B. Hot compensation is needed. C. No compensation is needed. D. Hot and cold compensations are needed. Correct answer is temperature can be measured accurately by using a thermocouple. Cold compensation. Okay. Cold junction temperature compensation should be done. Okay. We are generally making the cold junction as zero temperature and cold compensation is done for accurate measurement. Correct answer is option a is the correct answer. Then, fifth question. Then, fifth question is, what is a thermopile? A, single thermocouple, series parallel connection of thermocouples, C, parallel connection of thermocouples, D, series of thermocouples. Correct answer is, thermopile is actually a series connection of thermocouples. Correct answer is option D. So, these type of questions will get let you know that uh, what type of questions can come from this area. So, rather than just studying any topic blindly without knowing what type of questions can come from this area, if you practice the questions along with it, that is the best thing. Okay. So, that's why I'm including questions along with every topic. So, fifth question, correct answer is D. Sixth question, commonly used thermoelectric transducer is... This is a basic question, okay. So, the commonly used thermoelectric transducer is dash. A thermometer, B thermocouple, C linear variable differential transducer, D loud speaker. Correct answer is thermocouple is the most, <laughs> is the most commonly used type of thermoelectric transducer, okay. Correct answer is option B, okay. Moving on to the seventh question.
सेवेंथ क्वेश्चन इज ऑपरेशन ऑफ थर्मोकपल इज गवर्न बाय डैश ए पेलचेर इफेक्ट बी सी बैक इफेक्ट सी थॉमजन इफेक्ट डी ऑल ऑफ द मेंशन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी हैव एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द थ्री इफेक्ट विच इज गवर्निंग द थर्मोकपल प्रिंसिपल एक्चुअली द थ्री इफेक्ट इज एक्सप्लेनिंग द वर्किंग इट सेल्फ बट ओनली डिफरेंस इज इन द डिटेलिंग एक्चुअली द थॉमसन इफेक्ट इज द मोर डिटेल्ड वन पेलचेर इफेक्ट हैज is having lesser details as compared to thomson and the basic one is seebeck effect okay so all these things or all these effects are actually explaining the thermocouple working itself so the correct answer is option d moving on to the eighth question okay eighth question thermocouple is a dash a primary device b secondary transducer c tertiary transducer d none of the mentioned Correct answer is A. Thermocouple is actually an active transducer. It is a primary device. Okay. Correct answer is option A. Moving on to the next question. So the ninth question is thermocouple cannot be used to measure dash. A. Temperature of gas. B. Temperature of liquid. C. IR radiation. D. None of the mentioned. Correct answer is we can measure the temperature of anything with the help of a thermocouple. Then uh, there can be temperature of gas or liquid or IR radiation. so the correct answer is none of the mentioned it cannot be used is the question there is thermocouple cannot be used to measure dash it is none of the mentioned you can actually measure all these things all these options with the help of thermocouple so d none of the mentioned is the correct answer for ninth question the tenth question is which of the following element is used as a thermocouple in nuclear reactors a boron b platinum c copper d iron correct answer is a boron is the element which we can use as a thermocouple in nuclear reactors so the nuclear reactors are places where large amount of heat is liberated and here that is in nuclear reactors boron can be used as a thermocouple element to measure temperature above 1500 degrees celsius generally so correct answer is a boron is used to serve the purpose of thermocouples in nuclear reactors so the 10th question correct answer is a boron so these are the 10 questions which i have included in this video so in this video we have discussed about the basics of thermocouples the effects describing its working or its working principle and also we have discussed some important questions connected to the thermocouple session okay so if you are preparing for any type of competitive examinations of electronics these type of questions are very important so i am really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching